So, gentlemen, uh, Tom, Pat, thank you for joining us on Kicking Tables. Uh, Factory 4 looks so cool. I love games that have these, these as you describe the, the, the Tetris-style pieces that you have to put on a, on a, on a board. But uh, tell us about the game and, and, uh, and how, does, how does the game play through? Um, yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah, there's been a, a real explosion in, um, I, I think, a polyomino. Mm -hmm. titles is, is, yeah. is what they're called uh you know um uh recently like isla cats uh, new york zoo just came out um there's some really and, and it's uh tile laying is, is something that myself and my wife almost uh go to as, as a default so i love uh, tile laying games there's just yeah. something satisfying about them you know yeah I, I think i think for me it's that even if you're not winning you can still look at the end and go look what i made you right know? right which is, is so rewarding as well um but uh, specifically, Factory Floor is is um, it, it filled a, a gap for um, that, that me and my wife when we were playing games. It's like okay, I'd love to play the cats, but I don't have an hour, um, you know. Um, and uh, there, there are sort of shorter polyomino games out there, but um, you know things like patchwork and stuff like that are more kind of on on the sort of the simplistic side because of you know because of the niche they fill. So right. we wanted something that was um, a little bit more complex, but at the same time didn't take a long time to play. Um, so uh, we were look. I was looking at sort of a filler game that was sort of 20, 30 minutes, depending on two, you know, uh, well, it's a solo game as well, but uh, two to four players would be about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and as that kind of evolved, we, we started working with this idea that so many games rely on kind of the set collection of, of the tiles or right. where you place the tiles down on the board and what they cover and things like that. And we sort of wanted to play with this idea of how do different tiles interact with one another. So we, we hit this point of uh, three core tile types and they all kind of compound on one another to, to benefit, the, benefit the game. Um, right. So that was that... that um, that idea and then um i reached out to pat who is um uh, a good friend uh, par uh partner for for space Duck games and um sort of started talking about it and um and then the idea of the factory floor came from more from you pat and the artwork okay well the design i think yeah like well, in terms of the, the look of it you know like um i mean tom is great for thinking about like the the mechanics and the, obviously the game design you know that's what he yeah. does and uh, i'm always see i i have a like sort of my background is in animation mm -hmm. you know nice. uh, tv animation and and things like that that's usually that's, that's my day job you know so i'm always interested in the story and the character you know like like how we can make this kind of feel alive you know how it sort of you know it kind of resonates or vibrates something that feels fun you know right. they, you know it is games you know it has yeah. to, uh, they have to be fun you know so I just trying to sort of find something you know in um so just that you know like so like you know together we kind of sort of come up with like like the flavor you know like the 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 vibe for the game and how to sort of make it that you know just sort of engaging entertaining and hopefully say something along the way you know when we can so where where did the theme come from? Have you guys you know spent time working in factories yourselves, or is this just something that you thought this is gonna this is gonna translate really well into into our your game? Um, I, I worked in a factory with my dad when I was was uh, before I went to university. Uh, we made you know Radox. I don't know if you have Radox in America. Radox. No, it doesn't gel. sound familiar. It's a no, what? It's, oh, it's a shower gel. Okay. No, we don't <laughs> I have that in that yeah. factory. <laughs> um but uh, i i mean we we toyed with a few ideas didn't we pat there was um you you mentioned the i think it we was talked like about... a garden or something like, yeah like, right to look sort of garden tiling but more like like creating a garden or, or okay. something you know uh, so I, th I think obviously you know you're, you're putting pieces together so you're kind of feeling you know it, it kind of naturally brings you to an, a sense of like an air view you know like a sort of uh you know air view or like, like sort top of down, like, yeah. uh, top down exactly yeah. like, like bird's eye view yeah um, and uh you know how, how, how do you think about that? Well, you know, you kind of think natural. Well, you can think about many things, you know, but like, you know, uh, yeah, garden sort of came naturally, like a factory kind of came naturally. Obviously, because because we're talking about a grid and it's squares. Right. You know, a squares not, not naturally kind of evoke like sort of man-made structures, you know, like uh, usually, you know, like like visual design, you're thinking curves, circles are organic, are na right. you know, natural things, yeah. and like sort of squares, angles, they, they kind of evoke construction you know evoked sort yeah. of a man a man-made 
you know, uh, human-made sort of uh, things. So it kind of sort of, you know, it leans into that, you know. And obviously, like, maybe the factory kind of just automatically gives you a sense of, like, you know, things are moving, you know, it's dynamic. Things are, you know, we're, we're producing things, things are happening. There's a certain sort of busy floor kind of aspect right. to it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to try to sort of kind of generate that, you know, uh, sort of that, ambient you know that, that atmosphere you know to sort of make it feel like it's fast it, it kind of sort of ties up again with uh you know it's a, it's a 20 minute game 20 20 minutes half an hour game you're kind of feeling the sort of fast pace on it you right. know like you gotta you know we're embracing our sort of western gotta you know gotta get it done you know like produce produce you know <laughs> uh, sort of uh uh sort of idea at least you know we're having fun with that you know in this case anyway yeah and, cool. and so the, the art style for that game, was that an immediate, like, you just knew exactly what sort of art you wanted to work with when you, you got this, or did, did you go through a few different iterations? No, you, you do try, I mean, you, like, uh, you, you, you try a couple of things, you know, because yeah. you, you, you don't want to, like, like there, there is a race sometimes that, you know, the first thing you do, you can, have, you can sometimes sort of, like, put a lot of, like, you know, uh, sort of um, attach yourself too much to it. You know, yeah. like, because because that's the first thing you identify. But you wanna you wanna explore a couple of things. You know, like we did at one point again because it was very sort of grid and square based. We were thinking, oh, maybe maybe we do it like pixel art style. You know, because okay. it, yeah. it would have kind of sort of kind of had that vibe maybe. Mm. But um, but you know, and and you can get really cool um pixel art work and and, and style. Uh, but it didn't. It it feels slightly less personal to me. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Because you know you 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 can't get that much detail, and again because it's sort of like a top-down view, a bit worried that maybe maybe the design of like the the the, the factory pieces wouldn't be as clear, you know, because because they they are in themselves rather abstract, you know, it's like you know like sort of cranes and sort of uh, conveyor belts, you know, so you want to make them kind of clear enough or at least uh, so so. The, the 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 characters in this case really originated more from like okay let's make it happy kind of dynamic kind of a bit more lively yeah. and and embrace the meeple you know the meeple right you know you know get, get in touch with your inner meeple you know and find you know like you know it's sort of like a chunky thing you know barely like sort of limbs coming out of it you know sort of kind of uh, the characters really came out from that idea okay well, let's just follow the meeple you know and see what we can do and and something that feels that they are they kind of belong as a collective. But they also have a little bit of their own identity, you know, kind of oh, like yeah. the Smurfs, the Seven Dwarfs, yeah. obviously Minions, um, the little do uh, dozers the, the, from Fraggle dozers, Rock. Yeah, the yeah. Fraggle, so yeah, the Fraggle Rock dozers. You know, so it kind yeah. of has that that vibe. You know, that we're a collective, but we also have a bit of a, a, a an independence from each other, that sort of thing. You know, which again, kind of kind of ties up with this sort of production line that a, mm -hmm. you know a factory floor would have right know? right now i want to go back to uh describing the game itself and you so you've talked a little bit of the history of the game and where the idea came from but how does the game play what is the objective of the game and how do i win against tico well, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately the the game is uh you know most points at the end of a working week uh, wins. Um, so the way that the game breaks down structurally is um, it's played across um, five shifts, and then you have an AM and a PM shift uh, okay. each each day, and then there's a production phase at the end of, of two shifts. Um, so you've got ten, 10 rounds altogether with uh, five scoring rounds through that. Um, and uh, as you as you add things to the board, um, they they have different uh, different effects. So the production tiles give you uh, more production and there's a really nice sort of snowball effect there of like when you start the game and you've only got one or two tiles down and you're looking at the scoreboard and you say how could I ever you know get 100 150 200 points and then as the game progresses and you've got more production tiles and that spirals you feel like you're sort of growing and it's that that, that sort of feeling of building is, is really there um, the other tile types are staff rooms um, which allow you to hire workers okay. and then those workers can go onto the production tiles to increase the amount that they produce as well. And then the third main tile type we have is um, the, uh, uh, quality quality. thank you, yes, the quality control tiles and uh, they don't score through the game, uh, but at the very end of the game, they score every single tile that's around them. Oh, so yeah. it's it's a it's an interesting balancing act of how many staff rooms do I want to increase production tiles? Right. Uh, you know how many 
straight up production tiles do I want? But then additionally, like I want to put those quality control tiles at the right spots in in the the, the factory, so they're touching as many scoring tiles as possible. Right. But still, you know, so it's it's that puzzle really cool. uh, of 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 you know of see how how you trying to interact with them. And then there's a couple of other tile types. There are staff rooms, which are just small two. T- uh, sorry, uh, store rooms, which are just small two 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 size uh so you can fill in the gaps where you need to um and uh there's column tiles as well so if you want to make the game a little bit harder Mm -hmm. players can agree at the start of the game to put some column tiles down on on their boards in the same places so they're all having to work around around. oh that that tile would go there but oh i can't put it there because of that 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 wall right is there a way to stop your opponents (laughs) in any like or to is there any kind of a take that mechanic for your opponents to slow them down um there's not insofar as direct play um you're all pulling from the same pool of of tiles so you could be that guy that decides to take a tile that you know your your uh friend wants as opposed to taking the tile that you need oh okay i'm 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 more than happy for people to to play that way i think there's a lot of fun to have out of that but um i was definitely leaning towards more euro game style than um you know, because it's, uh, it's uh, as we sort of leaned into the artwork as well, and and, and talking uh, again about uh, the 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 workers. Yes. Uh, it became a much more. It, it's interesting how Pat's artwork sort of infers the game design as well, and right. it, it there was a sort of a natural feeling to make it more sort of a family game. So you know, we went down from twelve up to eight up. Right. And, you know, that, that, that inferred the, the game a little bit. Um, so there's not a big take that mechanic. So more it, of a, just yeah. a friendly competition to see who can get the most points. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can always throw your drink into the face of your competitor, <laughs> you know. And but that's, not, that's not specifically in the rules. That's just, no, you know, no, that's I house mean, rules. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's the that's ex- extreme version. You know? Right. Now, now, we recommend it to eat cold drinks. You know, uh, <laughs> in the in the spirit of ga- you know, sort of and you know? away from the game pieces themselves. That Please, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, if, they, if they spill it on the game pieces, they have to buy a second copy of the game. So, not going to be terrible for you guys. I like your thinking. <laughs> I like your thinking. Yeah, yeah. I'm a boy. Yeah, we, we might do a, a waterproof variant. As a, waterproof as a variant, exactly. <laughs> right? For the extreme I'm, version. Yes. Yeah, I, this is one question I always say. What is your personal strategy for when playing a game? I always love to hear, you know, from the developers how how do they win the game? Sean, plug your ears for a second, and uh, you know, just just to know, like, what what's your go to strategy when you're playing? My my go to strategy with any board game is not to lose as badly to my wife as I did the last time. Um, <laughs> okay, that's a good uh, but uh, <laughs> specifically with factory floor, it's it's all about those um, quality control tiles. If you can space yeah. those out. Um, and there's no, unlike other games, there is, uh, there's no limitation about where you place the tile in terms of they don't have to be next to each other. The next one doesn't have to be next to the okay. uh, previous one um, or orthogonally adjacent or anything like that. Now, obviously, I, I think there's a natural thing where people tend to do that anyway, because that's almost kind of an inherent understanding with tile laying games yeah. that people just naturally feed into that. But uh, you can place them wherever you want. So I like to grab a few quality control tiles, space them out evenly on the um, on the, the the board, and then just try and get as many production tiles around them as possible. Like so build build around them so everything's touching yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, it's uh, there's as much fun about the puzzle of the game, and sure. you're sort of creating your own puzzle. Yeah. And doing it as well. So yeah. Yeah. But that would be my that's my uh, my 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 uh, tip. Yeah. Now, with it being a uh, competitive game, you have a solo mode. How does that work? Um, yeah, so uh, you know, um, I, I, mean, I was watching. I was interested in watching um, uh, your your last uh, interview, and you saying sort of how important solo modes have become nowadays, which is absolutely you know. I mean, it really I mean, has, especially over yeah. the pandemic. You know, a lot of people you know stuck in their homes. You can't have groups of people over right now. Uh, yeah, solo yeah. modes have become very important. A lot of people on Kickstarter just say, "Hey, where's the solo mode?" Yeah, exactly. The, it's uh, it's the uh, the the COVID expedient. You know? Yes, <laughs> it's, it's everything everything forward. I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously, I, I wanted to make a good multiplayer experience, and then after that, it was like, okay, what's what's the solo opportunities here? Um, and I didn't just want to bolt one on um, if it didn't make sense, um, but. 
uh, it did. It did. There was there was a couple of ways you could lean into. So there's a very sort of nice, simple way of building a sort of a uh, competitively, you know, making it feel like a two player game. Um, that that's there. But the sort of the slightly more sort of advanced solo mode, uh, the the campaign as we're calling it, is um, sees you as the uh, local planning officer of a uh, Cogspinham Industrial Estate, and okay. there's a um, there's a uh, a booklet of at the moment 15 uh, scenarios and the scenario will say okay set the board up like this put these tiles out here to begin with okay. and then you have these tiles to work with and you have this many turns and this is the objective you have to achieve so you might have to reach a minimum um, production score by the end of, of the turns or you might have to get every tile onto the map um, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they're ranging from sort of fairly straightforward to really quite hard like even ones that i've made myself once i've forgotten how to how the tiles should go i'm sort of say <laughs> racking my brains and things like that but i guess the idea was um i was sort of thinking you know like uh, newspapers you always have that crossword you know that uh or the kind of that chess um yes. sort of uh, uh thing yep. where it's sort of it lay out the chessboard like this and then try and solve it that's great and uh i thought I, you know a lot of people that play polyominoes are into puzzles anyway and i yeah. thought well let's that's a, a brilliant opportunity to do that. So let's, 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 let's create some puzzles. Well, that's great. I mean, I was just going to say, yeah, you've basically taken your solo campaign and made it a, a you've taken your game and made it a puzzle. You know, here's your mm. solo. Your solo mode yeah. is literally solve these puzzles. And that's that's awesome. That's a really cool yeah. way of, of going with that because, as you said, it's perfect for these kind of uh, polyomino tiles. Uh, yeah. Now, what was the what was some of the, the the more difficult things to get right in your game as you were developing it? Uh, what kind of struggles did you go through, and how did you solve them? Um, from from my end, it was how many how many different tile types mm. uh, was was the big one. It's like um, it became more exciting to say, well, A interacts with B and B with C and C with D, and you know, and uh, once you had this chain of about eight or nine, you're like, oh, this is cool. And then, uh, you know, someone would come and play it, like, I have no idea what I'm doing you know, with right. all these different tile types. And I can only get one of each tile type down. So it was it was about learning that kind of, um, that sweet spot in terms of, 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 I feel like I've got enough to choose from, but at the same time, I don't feel like, um, you know, I'm a bit overwhelmed with with the way that they interact. I, it was consciously trying to keep it a sort of a straightforward to teach simple game. And I kind of um, I love heavyweight games like, you know, um, uh, looking back at sort of two or three hours of, of a play and going, wow, all, all of this stuff happened and things like that. So it's easy to sort of lean into, uh, you know, to, to go that way for me. But um it was so it was kind of just reining myself in a little bit and going, look, no, this is this is solid as as it stands. Let's not let's not push it. Right. <laughs> you know, you, you don't you don't need to have um, all these other things in the game. And uh, it was it was really interesting because obviously me, me and Pat work very closely together. Um, so it was sort of about discussing sort of the artistic, uh, right. you know, sort of how that that affects things and and then. Um, you know, it's for me. It's is interesting to see the the artistic development that Pat goes through for the games, and ultimately ends up with something great as well. You know, right? And Pat, from your side of things, uh, as an illustrator, as I'm not an illustrator, so I don't know, but uh, what goes behind the scenes of these things? But was there anything that you had to like? Was there anything difficult for you as you were developing that you had to conform to? Um, yeah, well, I mean, there, there's there's always an element of that because you you know there there is what you want to do say artistically or whatever mm -hmm. you know but yeah. there's also the you know the the reality is that this this game you know you, you kind of have to think about it from a production perspective like well i need to make this amount of assets in this amount of time you know so mm -hmm. you have to sort of be able to manage your time correctly obviously there there's uh you know you have to make sure that everything reads you know that it's it's understood that it's right. clear you know that, that 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 performs you know in that sense you know so and uh, and there's there's the restrictions of of space you know that you're thinking well the board is this size you right know? and uh how much detail can i put into the or the pieces the tiles are this size and how much detail can i put into them that that comes across and when is it just clogging it and it doesn't work because you know you have to think well this is not like an image that you can sort of zoom in and zoom in and zoom in it's going to be a real thing printed right yes you know so you have to think well, well what's the balance of those things you know like what's uh, you know, are the colors kind of working together? 
this sort of thing, you know, for you, you know, for for the for the audience, for the players to actually can experience it, you know. Uh, and obviously, there's a, a you know, uh, making sure that like the the EUI, the, the, sorry, the UI of things, you know, like how many stats or like numbers or values or like sort of uh, things that are, you know, uh, let's say above like the layer that you put on top of things, you know, with all the the numbers and things actually again doesn't get in the way, but they complement each other right. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So you know, my, my biggest terror is always whether Tom wants another number. You know? <laughs> uh, um, uh, I live in fear of that, basically. <laughs> uh, once that's done, once he says no, you know, the game is balanced, then it's like, okay, okay, <laughs> now, now, now you can breathe. Now you can yeah, breathe. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, now it's gonna be okay, guys. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> so so I, I'd love to know um, with your Kickstarter coming up, do you have any stretch goals um, plan that you might be able to share with us, or any expansion plans, per, per, perhaps? Yeah, uh, there's there's uh, stretch goals. Um, uh, we um, we're, we're going with a, a relatively modest uh, point to hit because my my philosophy is is that like if I can if we can get the game out to you know if if it's a couple of hundred people that look at it and go I really want to play this I yeah. still want that you know I don't want that to be a barrier I don't right. want there to have to now don't get me wrong like I really hope that you know. 500 a thousand people look at the game and, and, and think it's worth it i really do but um at the same time if it's if it's a little bit more modest like we're we're a relatively new company i realize there's a bit of blind faith there like we have the the, the reviews and the interviews and things but until yeah. someone actually physically gets a game in their hands like you don't know how how you feel about certain right. things yes. you know like um so uh we, we we've got uh five thousand dollars is our is our baseline target, um, and then the stretch goals kick in from six uh, six thousand uh, dollars. The first one is uh, there's a bag in the game to draw tiles from that that upgrades from a horrible uh, nasty flannel bag to a beautiful um, custom uh, not cu a beautiful cotton bag. So uh, okay. that's obviously one. But um, then we we get into some really fun things. Um, meeples are part of the game, as as, as Pat talked about, and um, we. We've, he's put so much effort into into the sort of the lovely the lovely characters and things like that that we thought it'd be nice to bring those to the table. So we start to get printed meeples, and then we start oh, to have um, nice. several different custom you know custom shapes and things like that. Um, so there, there'll still be uh, wooden wooden meeples, right. but there'll be there'll be different shapes based on on the the, the factory floor workers, oh, nice. and that's that's really nice. And then um, other you know other quality of uh, of life improvements like yeah. linen. Um, down the line finish, and yeah and quality finish. of life improvements i think are my favorite kind of stretch goals yeah right mm -hmm. um where you're you're getting get the whole game at like no matter what you don't need the stretch goals to get the extra content you wanted you're getting yeah. better quality and to me that's just the better way to go because now you're getting you're getting more for your dollar right yeah. you're getting a better yeah. quality for the same price and i think that's mm -hmm. always the better way to go for stretch goals at least for me that's my personal opinion i love quality of life improvements you know that's yeah, just I, oh, they're awesome i don't i don't want to you know i'm always a little bit sometimes when you see a stretch goal for for some kickstarters and you're like i really want to hit that stretch goal because then that feels like that's the game do you know you know right, like, yeah. right you can unlock that extra character or something like that well i want that extra character to begin with right <laughs> so right exactly it's, uh, it's um like i i love reaching yeah you, you're absolutely right like um when when you hit a, a, a kickstarter like uh it's it's you want the overall finish to be nicer you know, that's yeah. that's 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 what we, we we get collectively. We crowdfund together, I guess. For. Awesome. Well, the Kickstarter, uh, the game hits Kickstarter on February 16th. So everybody go out and check it out. Pat, Tom, thank you so much for joining us and uh, good luck with the campaign. I'm excited for the game because I just love this this style. But good luck with it. And thanks for joining us. Cheers, thank guys. you so much. much for having us. Thank Cheers. You. Uh, hi guys, thanks for uh, watching the interview. Um, really pleased to have you. Uh, love you to check out our Kickstarter and make sure you subscribe to OMG Nexus.